Today I'm doing a first impressions review of my 2020 Kawasaki Z900 RS. Before purchasing this motorcycle, I watched a bunch of review videos on it, and I have a different opinion on some of the things that I saw on the videos. To say I disagree with everything I saw on the review videos that I watched before buying this thing would be dishonest. I agree with a lot of things they said, but some of the things I don't. I've put 85 miles on it so far. Let me mention something real quick before I forget. Check out this chain slack. Look at that. 85 miles and it is loose. Anytime you get a new motorcycle or a new chain, they're going to stretch real quick for the first few miles. And then after that, they'll stretch very, very slowly. Just doing a walk around, the first thing that bugs me is this fender. It's too short. So debris gets all over the radiator. I even had a rock on top of it. And our beautiful chrome pipes are all nastified with grime, dirt, mud, and everything else because the front fender is just, it's too short in my opinion. It needs to come on down there and that would help keep things cleaned up. Same with the back fender. I would have liked to have seen something a little better, a little better design to keep the mud from just slinging up and all over everything. Just curious, how many people are going to use this right here? Isn't this odd? This is a helmet lock for like an old style helmet, a retro helmet, I guess. But who's riding around with those old helmets? I know some of you guys are, but are the majority of people using this thing? I thought that was kind of odd. And to me, basically useless on this bike. I'm 5'7", this is considered a tall bike, but to me, it's not bad at all. Let me show you. First, whoop, look how easy that was for me to get on. Did you see that? See how I just whoop my leg up over there? Whoop, and I'm on it. What's my point? My point is that this bike is a little bit tall, but it's actually easier to get on and off of than some bikes that have a lower seat height. Some of the sport bikes especially have this big high thing in the back and it makes it harder to hike your leg up over it and get on. Here, I'll demonstrate again, once more, how easy it is to get on. And schwa! You see? And I'm up on it. For your viewing pleasure and to be informational, here is a picture of my little footsies. And that's how I fit on this thing. Just like that. Little tall. See, that's exactly how my feet are on both sides of this buggy. And look at that, look how well balanced it is. Both feet are up right now. That's the thing. It doesn't feel tall, big, or heavy. It feels light and nice. If you're a beginner rider, this is going to be an issue for you. This bike is a little bit tall. But if you're like me and been riding them your whole life and you're a short little guy, I mean, aren't we used to this by now? I even considered getting lowering links and stuff like that at first, but after riding it just a short time, I realized this thing is so well balanced, feels so light. I mean, it's really easy to deal with. I'm not changing anything about it. Not the height, at least. But the bars for me, I will be getting risers, pullback risers, like nothing serious, one inch back, one inch up, something like that. This is really a comfortable seating position, but I just prefer the bars to be right about here. So that's just a personal preference. This motorcycle actually is in a good seating position if you ask me. If you're a little taller guy, it'd be perfect for you. Now let me tighten the chain up. We'll go for a rip and I'll tell you a little bit more that I learned about this bike so far within these 85 miles I've traveled on it. Engine mapping with this bike is a little bit off. I'm not really pleased with the way the engine mapping is on it. It will rev way up when it's cold, past 2,000 RPMs, it'll stay there. It's finally coming down, which I know that's like a choke, but this bike does run too lean. Part of the issue is about the lean condition is that even when I rode it in cooler weather, she was wanting to get hot. She's wanting to overheat a little bit, which I know it's new. The engine's tight and all that, but still, I think the engine mapping is off. I think they got it too lean because they're wanting to meet emissions or whatever they have to do. I'm not sure. Listen to this though guys, you guys, some of you may like this, I know I do, listen real closely, see if any of you catch on to this, listen. Did you hear that? Let me do one more time for you. She's running, now listen to it turn off, listen closely. 
I know this is a new bike and it's tight, but when you listen to it shut off, it just it just turns off like it's just seized up, like it's locked up. And that is because of it's got such high compression that engine does. Anytime an engine has real high compression, you turn it off, it'll just thump out and shut down for you. The exhaust does sound absolutely awesome on this motorcycle, but, but, don't expect it to be real loud, because it's not. It's got a good sound to it, but it's not real loud like a, like a race car or something like that. It just has a race car maybe sound to it, but not loud, like, not real loud. That's all I can say about it. So let me start by saying Kawasaki targeted guys like me, middle-aged guys, guys like me, guys like you to buy this motorcycle. And they did a good job of it. They targeted us, man, because they made these bikes, and ladies, sorry, but they targeted us, middle-aged people, because they made these bikes just like the old school bikes were, the ones that we always loved but upgraded them with fuel injection and wicked power and torque. This thing is awesome. Only 85 miles on it, 86 now, but I have loved every minute of riding this thing. The seating position, it's, for me, like I said, I'm a little lean forward. This is how I feel. Even though I'm back here, that's how I feel. So that's the reason why I wanna go with, uh, that's the reason why I'm going with the handlebar risers and they and they back up on me a little bit so I would like that position a little bit more but it's not gonna take much to get it I'm just I'm just fine-tuning that's it I'm just fine-tuning this bike to fit Benny that's all torque this thing is unbelievable this motorcycle is unbelievable look here let me demonstrate so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put her I'll put her in fifth right now I'm at fifth gear I'm going, let me get it down to 30 miles an hour. I'm gonna go on and get it right on down. I'm going straight up a hill. It's 30 miles an hour. I'm at like 2,100 RPMs. Pull back throttle, we're gone. That's fifth gear, it's crazy, this thing. There's no lugging, there's no chugging, there's no nothing, it just goes. So here's the torture. Here's the torture of buying a new motorcycle. You guys probably already know, I get to put 500 miles and I do I go by the book I I put 500 miles under four grand it's torture and then the next 500 miles up you know to get up to a thousand miles no more than five grand killing you man this thing redlines at 10,000 who the heck wants to put around when you got all this power but you know you got all this power and you can't even use it until it's broke in some folks will say, ride it like you're going to ride it. You know, break it in like you're gonna ride it. That's, I'm sorry guys, I can't go along with that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Engine parts need to wear in first. I mean, that's the whole point of it. So if you're gonna ride it like you're, if you're gonna break it in like you're gonna ride it, you're just, you're just talking about rev the engine. I mean, you're, you're not gonna let parts wear in nice. You need to let the parts wear in nice. Then after that, and only after that, ride it like you stole it. Because the parts are all worn in, and then when you start riding it like you want to, wide open, I hope, then, then the computer will adapt to your riding, and there you go, you're all good, everybody's happy, and it's awesome. Some folks have been working on the seat and like putting gel in them and this and that, to me, I don't really, I'm not gonna go along with that. Here's another thing I'm not gonna go along with. The seat to me is good. It feels really firm. It does feel firm, but it feels padded. So what I'm thinking is, give it a little time, this seat's gonna break in. And that's, that's what I think's gonna happen. You guys wanna feel the power of this thing? Watch, first gear. Ooh, I'm scared to even pull it back. Oh, I can't. Woo, there you go. Ah! It's awful. I mean, it's wicked power, man. And I'm just too old to be pulling wheelies and stuff. I'm out of practice. And it just pulls them on its own. So there you go. Be careful. Ride with caution. So you're probably asking yourself, hey, Benny, is there any better motorcycle than the Z900 RS? 
No, there's not. That's what I think. I love it. I don't think there's any other motorcycle that I would be happy with. I like the way it looks, I like the way it sounds, I like the way it rides. Do a little fine tuning and I'm gonna be in tip top shape on this bike. Ugh, ugh. The shifting is very smooth and pleasant. I love it. See, you can't even keep it under. It's so difficult to keep it under 4,000 because it's like this. You're in sixth gear. That's just, it's powerful, man. Very comfortable motorcycle. The mirrors, little round mirrors, are the best I've ever had on a motorcycle. They're very stable. They're the best I've ever seen. You can hardly see my arms in them. They're very stable. They're awesome. I love these mirrors. Some people complain about the brake reservoir right there. And I don't like it either right there, but it's not a deal breaker for me at all. Honestly, a lady or a gentleman could re probably relocate that pretty easy if they wanted to, but I'm not, I'm not that particular. This thing has riding modes. I just have it shut off. I haven't even tried them. Again, keep in mind, this is my first impressions review. So hopefully I'll make another video and where we can figure out these riding modes and stuff. I could care less really. I just like riding this thing and I hadn't had enough time to put into it to figure all that crap out. It, it doesn't interest me that much. I mean, I'm sure I'll like it if I'm out in the rain and stuff, but so far I don't even like getting this little puppy dirty. So look here, neutral. Is it hard to find neutral? Let's just see about that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, there you go. No, it's not hard to find neutral. Neutral's just there. I like that. My other, my Z400 Kawasaki, neutral is impossible to find and it even has like a solenoid. So if you're holding the brake, you click it into neutral and it goes into neutral when you're fully stopped. I just got back and I checked over my list and I forgot to mention something. That's the snatchy throttle. So when you give it just a little bit of acceleration, it's wanting to jump like a jackrabbit, just take off and go. Seems like that would be fun and like that's a whole lot of power and this and that, but I don't like it so much. It'd be better if it was just a little bit smoother because it's you have to control that throttle with your hand. I mean, it's very sensitive, I guess is what I'm saying. And that goes along with the engine mapping that I mentioned earlier in the video. I realize I haven't had this bike very long, but it is the coolest, nicest motorcycle I have ever ridden in my entire life, and that's the truth. More to come on this bike too, check it out. I have purchased a tour pack for it that I'm going to install. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see upcoming videos on this motorbike. If you want to see some nice close-up views of this motorbike, stick around for a few minutes. I'm going to wash her off. I'll scrub her down a little bit.
Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.